should possess a the knowledge and skills necessary to achieve the intended results of the audits they are expected to perform <clears throat> B, generic competence and a level of discipline and sector-specific knowledge and skills. Audit team leaders should have additional knowledge and skills necessary to provide leadership to the audit team. 7.2.3.2 <clears throat> Generic knowledge and skills of management systems auditors. Auditors should have knowledge and skills in the areas of outline below. A. Audit principles, processes, and methods. Knowledge and skills in this area are <coughs> in this area. <coughs> Enable the auditor to <laughs> auditors should have knowledge and skills in the areas outlined below audit principles process and methods knowledge and skills in this area enable the auditor to ensure audits are performed in a consistent and systematic manner an auditor should be able to understand the type of risks and opportunities associated with auditing and the principles of the risk-based approach to auditing. Plan and organize the work effectively. Perform the audit within the agreed time schedule. Prioritize and focus on matters of significance. Communicate effectively orally in writing, either personally or through the use of interpreters. Collect information through effective interviewing, listening, observing, and reviewing documented information, including records and data. <coughs> Understand the appropriateness and consequences of using sampling techniques for auditing. Understand and consider technical expert opinions. Audit the process from start to finish, including the interrelations with other processes and different functions where appropriate. <coughs> Verify the relevance and accuracy of collected information. Confirm the sufficiency appropriateness of audit evidence to support audit findings and conclusions. Assess those factors that may affect the reliability of audit findings and conclusions. Document audit activities and audit findings and prepare reports. Maintain uh, the confidentiality and security of information. B. Management system standards and other references, knowledge, and skills in this area enable the auditor to understand the audit scope and apply adult criteria and should cover the following. <coughs> Management system standards or other normative or guidance supporting documents used to establish audit criteria or methods. The application of management system standards by the auditee and other organizations. Relationships and interactions between the management system processes. Understanding the importance and priority of multiple standards of references. Applications of standards or references to different audit situations. The organization and its context. Knowledge and skills in this area enable the auditor to understand the auditee's structure, purpose, and management practices and should cover the following. <clears throat> Needs and expectations of relevant interest parties that impact the management system. Type of organizations, governance, size, structure, functions, and relationships. <clears throat> General business and management concepts, process, and related terminology, including planning, budgeting, and management of individuals, cultural and social aspects of the auditing. D. Applicable statutory and regulatory requirements and other requirements, knowledge, and skills in this area enable the auditor to be aware and work within. The organization's requirements, knowledge, and skills specific to the jurisdictions or to the auditee's activities, processes, products, and services should cover the following. Statutory and regulatory requirements and their governing agencies. Basic legal terminology, contract, and liability. 
No. Awareness of statutory and regulatory requirements does not imply legal expertise and the management system audit should not be treated as legal compliance audit. <clears throat> 7.2.3.3 Discipline and sector specific competence of audit auditors. Audit teams should have the collective discipline and sector specific competence appropriate for auditing the particular types of management systems and sectors. The discipline and sector specific competence of auditors include the following A. Management system requirements and principles and their applications. B. Fundamentals of the disciplines and sectors related to the management system standards as applied by the auditor. C. Application of discipline and sector-specific methods, techniques, processes, and pr practices, process, processes, and practices to enable the audit team to assess conformity within the defined audit scope and generate appropriate audit findings and conclusions. D. Principles, methods, and techniques relevant to the discipline and sex sector such that the auditor can determine and evaluate the risks and opportunities associated with the audit objectives. 7.2.3.4 Generic Competence of Audit Team Leader <clears throat> In order to facilitate the efficient and effective conduct of the audit, an audit team leader should have the competence to A. Plan the audit and assign audit tasks according to the specific competence of individual audit team members. B. Discuss strategic issues with top management of the audit team to determine whether they have considered these issues when evaluating there is an opportunity. C. Develop and maintain a collaborative working relationship among the audit team members. Ma D. Manage the audit process, including making effective use of resources during the audit, managing the uncertainty of achieving audit objectives, protecting the health and safety of the audit team members during the audit, including ensuring compliance of the auditors <clears throat> with the relevant health and safety and security arrangements, directing the audit team members, providing directions and guidance to auditors in training, preventing resolving conflicts and problems that can occur during the audit, including those within the audit team as necessary. E, represent the audit team in communications with the individuals managing the audit program. <coughs> The audit client and the audit team. F. Lead the audit team to reach the audit conclusions. G. Prepare and complete the audit report. 7.2.3.5 Knowledge and skills for auditing multiple disciplines. When auditing multiple disciplines, When auditing multiple discipline management systems, the audit team members should have an understanding of the interaction and synergy between the different management systems. Audit team leaders should understand the requirements of each of the management system standards being audited and recognize the limits of their competence in each of the disciplines. Hola. Audit team leaders should understand the requirements of each of the management system standards being audited and recognize the limits of their competence in each of the disi di disciplines. Note, audit of multiple disciplines done simultaneously can be done as combined audit or as an audit of integrated management system that covers multiple disciplines. 7.2.4 Achieving Auditor Competence Auditor competence can be acquired using a combination of the following. Successfully completing training programs that cover generic auditor knowledge and skills. B. Experience in a relevant technical, managerial, or professional position <coughs> is involving the exercise of judgment, decision-making, problem-solving, and communications with managers, professionals, peers, customers, and other relevant interested parties. C. Education training and experience in a specific management system, discipline, and sector does contribute to the development of overall competence. D. 
audit experience acquired under the supervision of an auditor competent in same discipline. Note, successful completion of training course will be depend on the type of course. For courses with an examination component, it can mean successfully passing the examination. For other courses, it can mean particip participating in and completing the course. <clears throat> 7.2.5 Achieving Audit Team Leader Competence An audit team leader should have required, acquired additional audit experience to develop the competence described in 7.2.3.4. The additional ex experience sh should have gained by working under the direction and guidance of a different audit team leader. 7.3 Establishing Auditor Evaluation Criteria The criteria should be qualitative, such as having demonstrated desired behavior knowledge or the performance of the skills and training of the workplace, and quantitative, such as years of work experience and education, numbers of audits co conducted, hours of audit training. <clears throat> 7.4. Selecting appropriate auditor evaluation method. The evaluation should be conducted using two or more of methods given in Table 2. In using Table 2, the following should be noted. A. The method outline represents a range of options that may apply that may not apply in all situations. B. The various methods outline may differ in their reliability. C. A combination method should be used to ensure an outcome that is objective, consistent, fair, and reliable. <clears throat> Table 2. Auditor Evaluation and Methods Evaluation Method Review of Records Objectives to Verify the Background of the Auditor Examples Analysis of records of education, training, employment, and professional credentials, and auditing experience. Feedback. Objective. To provide information about the performance of the auditor is perceived. Example. Surveys, questionnaires, personal references, testimonials, complaints, performance evaluation, peer review. <clears throat> Interview. To evaluate desired professional behavior and communication skills, to verify information and test knowledge, and to acquire additional information. Example, personal interviews. Observation. To evaluate desired professional behavior and ability to apply knowledge and skills. Example, role-playing, witness audits, on-the-job performance. Testing. To evaluate desired behavior and knowledge and skills and their applications. Example, oral and written exams, psychometric testing. Post audit review to provide information on the auditor performance during the audit activities, identify strengths and opportunities for the improvement. Example, review of the audit report, interview, interviews with the audit team leader, the audit team, and if inappropriate feedback from the audit team. 7.5. Conducting Auditor Evaluation The information collected about the auditor and the evaluation should be compared against the criteria. Set in 7.2.3, when auditor under evaluation will expected to participate in the audit program, does not fulfill the criteria, then additional training work or audit experience should be undertaken and a subsequent re-evaluation should be performed. 7.6 Maintaining and improving, improving auditor competence. Auditors and auditing leaders should continually improve their competence. Auditors should maintain their auditing competence through regular participation in management system, audits, and continual professional development. This may be achieved through means such as additional work experience, training, private study, coaching, attendance at meetings, seminars and conferences, or other relevant activities. The individuals managing the audit program should establish suitable mechanisms for the continual evaluation of the performance of the auditors and audit team leaders. The continual professional development activities should take into account the following. A. Changes in the needs of the individual and organization responsible for the conduct of the audit. B. Development is the practice of auditing including the use of technology. C. Relevant standard including guidance supporting documents and other requirements. D. Changes in sectors of disciplines. Annex A. 
additional guidance for auditors planning con conducting audits, applying audit methods. An audit can be performed using range of audit methods. An explanation of commonly used audit method can be found in this annex. The audit methods chosen for an audit depend on the defined audit, objectives, scopes, and criteria, as well as duration and location, available auditor, competence, any uncertainties arising from the application of audit methods should be considered. Applying a variety and combination of different audit methods can optimize the efficiency, efficiency, efficiency and effectiveness of the audit process and its outcome. Performance of an audit involves an interaction among individuals within the management system being audited and the technology used to conduct the audit. Table 8.1 provides examples of audit methods that can be used singly or in combination in order to achieve the audit objectives. If an audit involves the use of audit team with the multiple members, both on-site and remote methods may be used simultaneously. Note, additional information visiting physical locations is given in 8.5. 8.15. Table 8.1 Audit Methods Extent of Involvement Between the Auditor and the Auditee Location of the Auditor Human Interaction On-site Conducting Interviews Completing Checklists and Questionnaires With Auditee Participation Conducting Document Review With the Auditee Participation Sampling In Remote Via interactive communication means, conducting interviews, observing work performed with the remote guide, completing checklists and questionnaires, conducting document review with an audit participation, no human interaction, on-site, conducting document review, example, records data analysis, observing work perform performed, Conducting on-site visit, completing checklist, sampling, example, products. On remote, conducting document review, example, records, data analysis, observing work performed via surveillance means considered social and statutory and regulatory requirements, analyzing data. On-site audit activities are performed at the location of the audit. Remote audit activities are performed at any place other than the location of the audit regardless of the distance. Interactive audit activities involve interaction between the auditee's personnel and the audit team. Not interactive audit activities involve no human interaction with individuals representing the audit team, but do involve interaction with equipment, facilities, and documentation. The responsibility of the effective application of the audit methods for any given audit in the planning stage remains with the, either the individuals managing the audit program or the audit team leaders. The audit team leader has this responsibility for conducting the audit activities. The, fe the feasibility of remote audit activities can depend on several factors. Example, the level of risk to achieving the audit objectives, the level of confidence between auditor and auditee's personnel, and regulatory requirements. At the level of audit program, it should be ensured that the use of remote and on-site application of audit method is suitable and balanced in order to ensure satisfactory achievement of audit program objectives. 8.2. Process approach to auditing. The use of process approach is a requirement of all ISO management system standard in accordance with ISO or IEC directives, Part 1, Annex SL auditors should understand that auditing a management system is auditing an organization process and their interactions in relation to one or more management system standard. Consistent and predictable results are achieved more effectively and efficiently when activities are understood and managed as interrelated process that function as, the, as a coherent system. 8.3. Professional judgment. Auditors should apply professional judgment during the audit process and avoid concentrate, concentrating on the specific requirements of each clause of the standard at the expense of achieving the intended outcome of the management system. 
some ISO management system standard process do not readily lend themselves to audit in terms of comparison between a set of criteria and the content of a procedure or work instruction. In these situations, auditors should use their professional judgment to determine whether the intent of clause has been met. 8.4. Performance results. Auditor, auditors should be focused on the intended results of the management system throughout the audit process, while processes that they achieve are important. The result of the management system and its performance are what counts. It is also important to consider the level of the integration of the different management systems and their intended results. The absence of a process or documentation can be important as a high risk or complex organizations, but not so significant in other organizations. 8.5. Verifying information. In so far as pra practicably practicable, the auditor should consider whether the information provides sufficient objective evidence to demonstrate that requirements are being met, such being A. Complete all expected content is contained in the document information. Correct. The content conforms to other reliable sources such as standards and relations. C. Consistent. The document information is consistent in itself with related documents. D. Current. The content is up to date. <clears throat> it should also be considered whether the information being verified provides sufficient objective ev evidence to demonstrate the requirements are being met. If information is provided in a manner other than expected, example by different individuals, alternate media, the integrity of the evidence should be assessed. Specific care is needed for the information security due to applicable regulations on protection of data, in particular for information which lies outside the audit scope, but which is also contained in the document. 8.6. Sampling. 8.6.1. General audit sampling takes place when it's not practical or cost-effective to examine all available information during an audit. Example, records are too numerous or too dispersed geographically to justify the examination of every item in the population. Audit sampling of a large population is a process of selecting item, uh, selecting less than 100% of the items within the total available data set or populations to obtain and evaluate evidence about some characteristic of that population in order to conform a conclusion concerning the population. The objective of audit sampling is to provide information for the auditor to have confidence that the audit objectives can or will be achieved. The risk associated with sampling is that the samples may not be representative of the population from which they are selected. Thus, the auditor's conclusion may be biased and be different from that which would be reached if the whole population was examined. There may be other risks depending on the variability within the population to be sampled and the method chosen. Audit sampling typically involves the following steps. A. Establishing the objective of sampling. B. Selecting the extent and composition of the population to be sampled. C. Selecting the sampling method. D. Determining the sample size to be taken. E. Conducting the sampling activity. F. Compiling, evaluating, reporting, and documenting results. When sampling consideration should be given to the quality of the available data as sampling sufficient. Hello? When, when some consider, consideration shall be given to the quality of the available data, a sampling of sufficient and accurate data will not provide useful results. The selection of appropriate samples should be based on both the sampling method and type of data required. Example, to interfere, infer a particular behavior method, a pattern, or draw inferences across a population. Reporting on the sample selection could take into account the sample size, selection method, and estimates made based on the sample and confidence level. Audits can use either judgment-based sampling or statistical sampling. 8.6.2 Judgment-based sampling Judgment-based sampling relies on the competence and experience of the audit team. 
For judgment based sampling, the following can be considered A. Previous audit experience with the audit scope. B. Complexity of requirements, including statutory and regulatory requirements, to achieve the audit objectives. C. Complexity interaction of the organization process and management system elements. D. Degree of change in technology, human factor, and management system. E. Previous identified significant risk and opportunity for improvement. F. Output from monitoring or management system. A drawback to judgment-based sampling is that there are statistical estimates of the effect of uncertainties in the findings of audit and the conclusions reached. 8.6.3 Statistical Sampling If the decision is made use of statistical sampling, the sampling plan should base on the audit objectives and what is known about the characteristics of overall populations from which the samples are to be taken. Statistical sampling design uses same sample selection process based on probability theory. Attribute based on sampling is used when there are only two sample outcomes for each sample. Example, correct, incorrect, or pass or fail. Variable-based sampling is used when the sample outcomes occur in a continuous range. The sampling plan should take into account whether the outcomes being examined are likely to be attributed based on variable base. For example, when evaluating conformity or completed forms to the requirements set out in the procedure, an attribute-based approach could be used when examining the occurrence of food safety incidents or the number of security breaches. A variable-based approach would likely be more appropriate. Elements that can affect the auditing sampling plan are A. The context, size, nature, and complexity of the organization B. The number of competent auditors C. The frequent of audits D. The time of individual audit E. Any external required confidence, confidence level F. The occurrence of the undesirable and or unexpected events when a statistical sampling plan is developed, the level of sampling risk that the auditor is willing to accept is an important consideration. This is often referred to as an acceptable confidence level. For example, a sampling risk of 5% corresponds to an acceptable confidence level of 95%. A sampling risk of 5% means the auditor is willing to accept the risk that 5 out of 100 or 1 in 20 of the samples examined will reflect the actual values that will be seen if the entire population was examined. When statistical sampling is used, auditors should pro appropriately document the work performed. This should include a description of the population that was intended to be sampled, the sampling criteria used for the evaluation, example, what is an acceptable sample, the statistical parameters, and the methods that were utilized, the number of samples evaluated, and the results obtained. 8.7 Auditing Compliance Within a Management System the audit, the audit team should consider if the audit team has effective process for A. Identifying its statutory and regulatory requirements and other requirements it is committed to. B. Managing its activities, products, and services to achieve compliance with these requirements. C. Evaluating its compliance status. In addition to the generic guidance given in this document, when assessing the processes that the auditee has implemented to ensure compliance with relevant requirements, the audit team should consider if the auditee 1 has an effective process for identifying, identifying changes in compliance for requirements and for considering them as part of the management of change. 2. Has competent individuals to manage its compliance processes. 3. Maintains and provides appropriate documented information on its compliance status as required by the regulators or other interested parties. Four, includes compliance requirements in its internal audit program. Five, addresses any instances of non-compliance. Six, considers compliance performance in its management reviews. 8.8, .8, auditing context. 
Many management systems, standards requires an organization to determine its context, including the needs and expectations of relevant interested parties and externals and internal issues. To do this, an organization can use various techniques for strategic analysis and planning. Auditors should confirm that suitable process have been developed and for this and are used effectively so that their results provide a reliable basis for determining the scope and the development of the management system. To do this, auditors should consider objective evidence related to the following A. The process or methods used. B. The sustainability and competence of the individuals contrib contributing to the process. C. The result of the process. D. The application of the results to determine management system and scope and development. D. E. Periodic reviews of context as appropriate. Auditors should have relevant sector-specific knowledge and understanding of the management tools that organizations can use in order to make a judgment regarding the effectiveness of the process used to determine context. 8.9. Auditing leadership and commitment. Many management system standards have increased requirements for top management. This requirements includes demonstrating commitment and leadership by taking accountability for the effectiveness of the management system and fulfilling a number of responsibilities. This includes the tasks the top management should undertake itself and others can be delegated. Auditors should obtain objective evidence of the degree to which top management is involved in decision-making related to the management system and how it dem demonstrates commitment to ensuring its effectiveness. This can be achieved by reviewing the results from relevant processes. For example, policies, objectives, available resources, communications from top management, and by interviewing staff to determine the degree of top management engagement. Auditors should also aim to interview top management to confirm that they have an adequate understanding of the discipline-specific issues relevant to their management system. Auditors should also aim to interview top management to confirm that they have an adequate understanding of the discipline-specific issues relevant to their management system, together with the context their organization operates within, so they can ensure that the management system achieves its intended results. Auditors should not only focus on leadership at the top management level, but should also audit leadership and commitment to other levels of the management as appropriate. 8.10 Auditing Risks and Opportunities As part of the assignment of an individual, audit the determination and management of the organization risks and opportunities can be included. The core objectives such as an audit assignments are to give assurance of the credibility of the risk and opportunity identification process, give assurance that the risks and opportunities are correctly determined and managed, review, review how the organization and addresses its determination risk and opportunities. An audit of an organization approach to the ter determination of risks and opportunities should not be performed as a standalone activity. It should be implicit during the entire audit of a management system, including when interviewing top management, an auditor should act in accordance with the following steps and collect objective evidence as follows. A. Inputs used by the organization of determin de determining its risk and opportunities which may include analysis of external and internal issues, the strategic direction of the organization, interested parties related to its discipline-specific management system, and their requirements also, potential sources of research as environmental aspect and safety hazard, etc. B. Method by which risks and opportunities are evaluated, which can differ between disciplines and sectors. The organization's treatment of its risks and opportunities, including the level of risk it wishes to accept and how it's controlled, will require the application of professional judgment by the editor. 8.11 Life Cycle Some discipline-specific management systems require the application of a life cycle perspective to their products and services. 
auditors should not consider this is a requirement to adopt a life cycle approach. A life cycle perspective involves considerations of the control and influence the organization has over the stages of its products and service life cycle. Stages in the life cycle include acquisition of raw materials, design, production, transportation, or delivery, use end-of-life treatment, and final disposal. This approach enables the organization to identify those areas where, in considering its scope, it can minimize its impact in the, on the environment while adding value to the organization. The auditor should use their professional judgment as how the organization has applied a life cycle perspective in terms of its strategy and the A. Life of the product or service B. Organization influence on the supply chain C. Land of the supply chain D. Technological complexity of the product If an organization has combined several management systems with a single management system to meet on its own needs, the auditor should look carefully at any overlap concerning consideration of the life cycle. 8.12. Audit of supply chain. The audit of the supply chain to specific requirements can be required. The supplier audit program should be developed with applicable audit criteria for the top type of suppliers and external providers. The scope of the supply chain audit can differ. Example, complete management audit, system audit, single process audit, product audit, configuration audit. 8.13. Preparing audit work documents. When prepare, preparing audit work documents, the audit team should consider the following uh, the questions below for each document. A. Which audit record will be created by using this work document? B. Which audit activity is linked to this particular work document? C. Who will be the user of this work document? C. What information is needed to prepare the work document? For combined audits, which documents should be developed to avoid duplication of audit activities by clustering of similar requirements for requirements from different criteria, coordinating the content of related checklists and questionnaires. The audit work document should be adequate to address all those elements of the management system within the audit scope and may be provided in any media. 8.14. Selecting sources of information. The sources of information selected may vary may vary according to the scope and complexity complexity of the audit and may include the following a interview with the employees and other individuals b observations of activities and the surrounding work environment and conditions c documented information information such as policies objectives plans procedures standards instructions licenses and permits, specifications, drawings, contracts, and orders. Records, D, records such as inspection records, minutes of meetings, audit reports, records of monitoring program, and the results of measurements. E, data summarizes, analyzes, and performance indicators. F, information and audit is something depends on any procedures, for the control of sampling and measurement processes. G, reports from the other sources, example, customer feedback, external service and measurements, other re relevant information for external parties and external provider ratings. H, databases and the websites. I, simulation and modeling. If point 15, visiting the audit is location. To minimize interference between audit activities, and the auditee's work process, and to ensure the health and safety of the audit team during a visit, the following should be considered. A. Planning the visit. Ensure permission and access to those parts of the audit locations to be visited in accordance with the audit scope. Provide adequate information to auditors on security health, example, quarantine, occupational health and safety matters, and cultural norms, and working hours for the visit, including requested and recommended vaccination and clearances, if applicable. Confirm the oddity that any required personal protective equipment or PPE will be available for the audit team, if applicable. Confirm the arrangements with the oddity regarding the use of mobile devices and cameras, including recording information, information such as 
photographs of vacations and equipment, screenshot, copies or photocopies of documents, videos of activities and interviews, taking into consideration security and confidentiality matters, except for unscheduled and ad hoc audits, ensure that personnel being visited will be informed about the audit objectives and scope. B. On-site activities. Avoid any unnecessary disturbance of the operational processes. Ensure that the audit team is using PPE properly, if applicable. Ensure emergency procedures are communicated. Example, emergency exits, assembly points, schedule communication to minimize disruption, adapt the size of the audit team and the number of guide guides and observers in according with the audit scope in order to avoid interference with operational process as far as practicable. Do not touch or manipulate any equipment unless explicitly permitted even when competent or licensed. If an incident occurs during the on-site visit, the audit team leader should review the situation with the audit team and if necessary with the audit client and reach agreement on whether the audit should be interrupted, rescheduled, or continued. If taking copies of documents in any media, ask for permission in advance and consider confidentiality and security matters. When taking notes, avoid collecting personal information unless required by the audit objectives or audit criteria. C. Virtual and audit activities. Ensure that the audit team is using, using agreed remote access protocols, including requested devices, software, etc. If taking screenshot copies of documents of any kind, ask for permission in advance and consider confidentiality and security matters and avoid recording individuals without their permission. If an incident occurs during the remote access, the audit team leader should review the situation with the audit team and, if necessary, with the audit client and reach agreement on whether the audit should be interrupted, rescheduled, or continued. Use floor plans, diagrams of the remote location for reference. <laughs> Maintain respect for privacy during audit breaks. Consideration needs to be given to disposition of information and, uh, and audit evidence, irrespective of the type of media at a later date once need for its retention has lapsed. 8.16 Auditing Virtual Activities and Locations Virtual audits are conducted when an organization performs work or provides a service using an online environment allowing persons irrespective or physical locations to execute process. Example, company intranet, a computing cloud. Uh, auditing of a virtual location is sometimes referred to as a virtual auditing. Remote audits refer to use, using the technology to gather information, interview an audit, etc. when face-to-face -face methods are not possible or desired. A virtual audit follows the standard and audit process while using technology to verify objective evidence. The auditee and the audit team should ensure appropriate technology requirements for a virtual audit, which can be included. Ensuring the audit team is using agreed remote access protocols, including requested device, software, etc. Conducting technical checks ahead of the audit to resolve technical issues. Ensuring contingency plans are available and communicated. Example, interruption of access, use of inter alternative technology, including provision for extra audit time if necessary. Auditor competence should include technical skills to use appropriate electronic equipment and other technologies technology while auditing. Experience in facilitating meetings virtually to conduct the audit remotely. When conducting the opening meeting or auditing virtually, the auditor should consider in the following items related with virtual or remote audits. Using floor plans diagrams of remote recursion for reference or mapping of electronic information, facilita facilitating for the prevention of background noise, disruptions, and interruptions, asking for permission in advance to take screenshot copies of documents or any kind of recordings, and considering confidentiality, security matters, ensuring confidentiality and privacy during audit breaks, example, by muting microphones, pausing cameras.
8.17 Conducting interviews Interviews are, are an important means of collection information and should be carried out in a manner adapted to the situation individual interviews interviewed either face to face or via other means of communication however the auditor should consider the following a interviews should be held with individuals from appropriate levels and functions performing activities or tasks within the audit scope b interviews should be normally be conducted during normal working hours and where practical at the normal workplace of the individual being interviewed C. Attempts should be made out to put the individual being interviewed at ease prior to and during the interview. D. The reasons for the interview and any note-taking should be explained. E. Interviews may be initiated by asking individuals to describe their work. F. The type of question should be carefully selected. Example, open, clo open close, leading questions, appre appreciative inquiry. G. Awareness of limited nonverbal communications in virtual settings instead of focus should be on the type of questions to be used to use in finding objective evidence. H. The results from the interview should be summarized and reviewed with the interviewed individual. I. The interviewed individual should be thanked for their participation and cooperation. 8.18. Audit findings. 8.18.1 Determining Audit Findings When determining audit findings, the following should be considered A. Follow-up reviews, audit records, and conclusions B. Requirements of the audit clients C. Accuracy, sufficiency, and appropriateness of objective evidence to support audit findings D. Extent to which plan and audit activities are realized and plan results of achieved finding exceeding norm E. Finding exceeding normal practice or opportunity for improvement. F. Sample size. G. Categorization, if any, of the audit findings. 8.18.3. Recording nonconformities. For records of nonconformity, the funds should be considered A. Description or, or description of or reference to other criteria. B. Audit evidence. C. Declaration of conformity. D. Related audit findings, if applicable. 8.18.4. Dealing with fines related to multiple criteria. During an audit, it is, it is possible to identify findings related to multiple criteria. Where an auditor identifies a finding link to one criterion on a combined audit, the auditor should consider the possible impact on the corresponding or similar criteria of the other management systems. Depending on the arrangements with the audit client, the auditor may raise either A, separate findings for each criterion or a single finding combining the reference to multiple criteria. Depending on the arrangements with the audit client, the auditor may guide the auditee on how to respond to those findings. Yan na. Tapos na. References or Bibliography ISO 9000 Column 20, of 2015 Quality Management Systems Fundamentals and Vocabulary ISO 9001 Quality Management Systems Requirements ISO Guide 73 of 2009 Risk Management Vocabulary ISO IEC 17021-1 Conformity Assessment, Requirements for Bodies Providing Audit and Certification of Management System. Part 1, Requirements. Should possess A. The knowledge and skills necessary to achieve the intended results of the audits they are expected to perform.